Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we've got a new upgrade. This is a, a new power supply, uh, linear. This is a, a 30 volt, uh, 5 amp supply. Uh, all digital, constant current, constant voltage. Supply. Uh, this is the uh, Tech Power DC regulated power supply. This is the TP uh, 3005T. Obviously made in China. What I wanted to do is do an unboxing of this and do uh, first impressions. I got this off of Amazon. It had a pretty decent reviews, although the one complaint was almost universally across the board is the smell, whatever preservative they ship this thing in, is not particularly pleasant. But the features of the supply looked very attractive compared to the uh, price and also uh, this thing is probably half the size of the Deltron power supply that I looked at in uh, one of my previous videos uh, and what the f three times the voltage although the current on it is lower it said I look forward to having uh, digital knobs uh, to uh, set things with so now let's uh, pop it out of the box and have a look-see. Now let's go ahead and take a, take a smell. Uh, there, there is definitely a, a smell to it. It's not as bad as I was expecting it. And we've got some cables which uh, this thing does come with a set of uh, banana plugs and uh, with alligators on it. And we've got a standard cable. Then we've got the manual here with a uh, one year limited warranty, which by the way, I will pull this thing apart and have a look-see inside to see what, what it actually looks like. And let me see if I can actually do this on camera. That was easier than I was expecting. Kind of looks like a face. And there we go. Here's our new supply. Feels like a nice solid on off switch. The encoders are clicky. Kind of feel like they have a little bit of drag on them. So they're not the, the, the best feeling encoders. Uh, these are buttons. That sounds like there's some schmutz on it or something. It's weird. The encoders, as I mentioned, also have a button built in, which it sounds like a nice solid button. The feet don't seem to line up all the way, but again, this was not a terribly expensive supply. The binding posts don't have any holes in them. 
that's disappointing. So you can't just slip a wire into it and tighten it down. You can wrap the wire around, but also normally binding posts don't unscrew all the way. Nope, no holes in the binding posts at all or whatsoever. I mean, otherwise it seems reasonably clean. Although the, uh, let me see if I can get a view of it. Uh, it kind of bothers me that this is the, it's kind of hard to see in this light, sorry. But this is the uh, black terminal, this is the green terminal, and this is the red terminal. And personally, I don't own any banana plugs that have the, the two that are tied together. But when you're in a lab and you have connectors like that, the ground being in the middle is really annoying because you can't just outright plug them in which I can't speak to the actual spacing because that's the other annoying thing. So if the black and red are right next to each other, but then they're too far apart or too close together that you can't get that dual plug in. Uh, when we t uh, tear it apart uh, in a later video, I'll see if these guys can be moved around. Now we've got a banana plug here it's a it's a little loosey goosey but I mean it, it feels pretty decently tight in there I guess it could be worse well now let's um, plug it in power it on and have a play with the uh, controls now I have this guy plugged in, let's go ahead and power it on and see what happens. Which, it looks like the supply came up in constant voltage mode. Let me zoom in on that a little better so you can see it. But it tripped the overcurrent protection, which is set at 5.2 amps, which seems kind of odd. And at least according to the things I read online, the overcurrent protection shuts down the outputs. So let's let's set a voltage. and see what our output shows. Let's see if I can get both of those in the shots. All right, I'm guessing that the light here is not that we tripped the overcurrent protection, but that the uh, uh, overcurrent protection is enabled, which what we can do is by holding this button, Long push over current on off. Oh, on off. There we go. I'm not a giant fan of the overcurrent protection style uh, supply. The idea being is that if the current uh, reaches the set threshold, the supply, instead of going into constant current mode, just shuts off its output. And we can uh, play with that feature a little bit later. Something I'm more curious about is whether uh, the supply is capable of, uh, you know, uh, bringing up a load slowly so that it looks like when the, how would you put the, uh, when you don't push the button to go into setting mode, the, the knobs don't actually do anything, which uh, the supply is decently accurate here, but let's try, let's go knob and okay this is a live output so you can so here's the other interesting part can you bring it up 
with a lower digit. Ooh, you can. So I, I really like that in the sense of that you can, you can bring the voltage up slowly uh, in case you have a circuit you've never powered up before, etc. Which it looks like it leaves you on the last digit you uh, started off on as well. That's, I don't know if that's annoying or I guess when I do a full review of the supply. But you can select a digit and tweak it really slowly. And then it locks you out and then you have to push it again and it'll scroll through the digits, which it's, that's actually kind of weird that it goes back and forth instead of circling in on itself. But again, this is not a several thousand dollar Agilent or a, a, sorry, Keysight power supply. So the user interface isn't going to be quite as sexy, but this is a, so far, a reasonably sexy user interface because the thing that I was looking for, the thing that I really like is this feature that when I push current, it will actually show me what the uh, current limit is. And a lot of times, as I showed you on the Deltron supply, you can't really do that without actually forcing the supply to go to constant current mode. So now what we can do is we can use the meter to actually push it into constant current mode. So let me go ahead and unplug that, go to amps, and there we go. The supply has gone from constant voltage mode oh, right there to constant current mode. And 200 milliamps and we're pushing 200 milliamps. So this is a decently functional supply for, you know, what we paid for it. Uh, let's see if we can, like I said, bring it up slow. Three, four. And now we just heard the fan come on because this thing's at, you know, is putting some watts out now. And at least according to the literature. Hmm. Oh. Doi. See, that's, th that's going to get annoying that you have to push the button to uh, change the setting because just right there, I don't know if you noticed, but I was, I'm tweaking the knot, I'm tweaking the knot. Why isn't it working? Oh, you have to push the, push the button. And it looks like it has control of the fan with uh, essentially the, the, the current output that you want from it which is the, which is fine and let's go ahead and put you back in constant voltage mode like that and see if we hear any relays clicking there are some relays looks like seven to eight volts 14 to 15, 21 to 22, and that, that's probably the last relay. So this thing will go up to 32 volts. And again, I'm spinning the knob, but it's not changing and not a bad feature. Technically, you know, if you're working on something and you bump it, oops, you know, I just put 12 volts onto my 5 volt chip, but again, you just kind of have to get used to it to, to push the button and then scroll it down. Overall, not a bad supply. Like I said, it, 
it, it seems to be decently accurate. I'm not saying that this Fluke 115 is, you know, uh, absolutely accurate. It's actually kind of an old meter. I've never had it cowled, but I mean, the, the meter and the supply agree quite nicely. So uh, there is kind of a smell to it. You know, there, oh, people were not exaggerating that, like I said, there's, little bit of a smell to it uh at, at lower power the fan seems to be reasonably quiet but at when you know when we went above the amp that fan really wound up there so i would say not a not a bad buy here uh as i mentioned previously i will tear the supply apart to have a look see what it looks like on the inside did is it actually designed reasonably well? Because at least aesthetically on the outside, they did a reasonably decent job. And the controls are, let's just say intuitive enough. Well, it said the fact that you can actually dial in your uh, constant current mode without having to short the outputs or anything is awesome. I love that feature. Uh, the fact that you have to push the button every time is just a little annoying but it's something I'm uh, willing to uh, live with. So thank you for watching. So if you have any questions, you're always, uh, or comments, you're always to welcome to uh, comment down below and uh, give me a big old thumbs up.